Since the beginning of time, humans have shared the world with other species. Each one has a unique perception of what reality is like in terms of color, speed, and sound. Today, thanks to technology, we can more or less understand how our world sounds to animals. So how about we try living with their ears for a bit? Let's start with man's best friend, dogs. It is known that dogs experience time quite differently than our own. The best guess is that one human year equals seven dog years. But when you call out their names, what exactly do they hear? Dogs experience our world slower than humans. That works both for their perception of time, but also for sound. Let's say you're calling Skipper to go for a walk. You're speaking at a normal pace like you do every day. But to Skipper, he's hearing you in slow motion. As if you just pressed the 0.75 speed on your Spotify app. You've also probably heard that dogs have a wider hearing range than humans and that they can hear sounds from a very great distance. And this is true. An average human being has a hearing range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. We hear better when we are younger and tend to hear less when we get older. Yep, this is actually scientific. But our dogs can hear up to 45 kilohertz, which is considerably more than us. Some dog breeds are known to be good hunters, and for that reason, they would need better hearing equipment. The thing is, dogs aren't as good as humans at distinguishing sounds. Humans easily know the difference between slow and go, while dogs, not so much. This is called frequency selectivity. The scientific explanation for this is that different parts of the cochlea answer to different frequencies. This is what a human ear looks like on the inside. And this is what a dog's ear looks like. The cochlea is this part right here that looks like the shell of a snail. It's made up of saltwater-like fluid. At the innermost center of this cochlea, there are tiny hairs that vibrate according to the frequency of sound we are receiving. Some hairs will only be activated by high-pitched sounds, while other hairs will be activated with lower notes. Dogs really prove to be humans' besties, as they also tend to lose their hearing with old age. You see, human hearing is at its prime when we're young. A study from the University of New South Wales says that a child can hear up to 24 kilohertz. When we're young, we can hear extremely high-pitched sounds, but this tends to decrease once we get older. The maximum hearing capacity of an older person can go as low as eight kilohertz. I mean, this person probably can't hear the birds chirping or even the beeping of their microwave. Both in dogs and humans, the loss of hearing has to do with the loss of the tiny hairs in the cochlea. And what about cats? Cats can hear higher frequencies than dogs. Their hearing can go a little beyond 60 kilohertz. This is especially important since they hunt small rodents that make almost imperceptible noises to our human ears. But with a cat's hearing device, it can pick up on a mouse hiding in a bush over a hundred feet away. The funny thing is that while dogs experience reality in slower motion than humans do, cats actually experience life about 9% faster than we do. You've probably heard that sound can also be classified as either infrasound or ultrasound. Here's what we'll do. I'll give you an example of a sound and you'll tell me if you think it's infrasound or ultrasound. Would you say the sound of tectonic plates moving around is infra or ultrasound? The correct answer is infrasound. This one is tricky. The movement of ants in an underground tunnel. Also, infrasound. Infrasounds are low range frequencies, anything ranging below 20 hertz, which means we can't hear them. But an elephant can. When you look at elephants, one of the first things you'll notice is their enormous ears. Well, everything is pretty gigantic, but the ears are impressive especially in comparison to ours. Their ears allow them to pick up on sound waves that are much longer than the ones we pick up on. This means they can pick up on the movement of clouds and can physically hear when rain clouds are gathering. This is helpful to them because they will know when it's time to head down to water reservoirs, for example. Elephants also use infrasound to communicate with each other. They do that by pounding their feet on the ground. 
This sets up a powerful but hardly audible vibration. And since elephants are so awesome, they can pick up the vibration through nerve endings in their feet and ear bones. It works kind of like a bush telephone. Speaking of vibration, how do you think a snake can be enchanted by a flute if it doesn't have any ears? Well, the snake is not following the music. It's following the man's imperceptible foot tapping on the ground. You see, for humans, sound waves are usually carried by the air. But snakes, who move around through the ground, are connected to the environment by vibration. Snakes don't have eardrums, so their inner ear is connected to their jaw. Plus, the vibrations move from bone to bone inside a snake. This is called osteophony, which literally means that snakes listen with their bones. If this worked for humans, sound waves could literally send chills down someone's spine, huh? Okay, so humans listen through the air. Elephants and snakes can hear through the ground. How does hearing work for water animals? You could think that the water element impairs hearing, but not for dolphins. Dolphins emit extremely high-frequency sound waves that are classified as ultrasound. They emit clicking sounds to scan the water for food and other animals. Whichever way sound bounces back to them will help them identify what's in the water ahead and around them. To put it simply, dolphins see with their ears. This ability is called echolocation, and it's a form of navigation through sound. Well, you've heard of sonars, right? It's an instrument ships use to search for things underwater. A sonar emits very fast sound pulses that bounce off the seafloor and back. This way, they can detect the depth of the water. They can find shipwrecks and even discover geological formations. That's pretty much what dolphins do to locate themselves. Oh, and if National Geographic is right, humans can hear frequencies up to 100 kilohertz when we are diving underwater. This means we can hear almost the same way as dolphins. Can you imagine using echolocation to wade through the water? Scientists don't exactly know why this happens, but they have two guesses. It might have something to do with how sound travels differently through the water. It can also have to do with the way our ears receive sound underwater and how our brain interprets it. Now, it's not only dolphins that can use sound to navigate through life. Bats can also do that. Since bats tend to live in dark or even pitch black environments, they can't really count on their vision. But they have such precious hearing equipment that they might not even need to watch where they are going. Even though a bat's brain is tiny, it can thoroughly map the entire environment it is in and easily locate prey. What about rodents? If you've ever seen a mouse or a chipmunk bouncing around, you've probably thought they looked a bit accelerated. Here's a fun fact. Compared to humans, a chipmunk experiences reality at half the speed as we do. So what looks super fast and clumsy to us is seemingly pretty chill from that rodent's point of view. In terms of hearing, a mouse's hearing can go as high as 91 kilohertz, which is very, very high. Quite fascinating, huh? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.